church. Glad to have you guys with us today. Can't wait to get back with you in person, but until then, this is how we're doing it, and we're so glad to have you here with us. We thank you for taking out time every week to come and to hang out with us. Um, A couple of housekeeping things that we've got to go over real quick, and I apologize. I have to read it on here because I can't remember it. If you want to give via text, you can text GIVE to 706-707-3010. If you want to write a check for giving, you can send that to P.O. Box 206 Rome, Georgia, 30162, or you can go on our website at wethe.church slash give. Don't forget to click like to subscribe on these videos every week so that you can see everything we every time we put up something new. And once again, man, we can't we can't express how much we appreciate you guys tuning in every week, hanging out, listening to us, and when we get back into a live service, we can't wait to see you guys again. Love you guys, praying for you, hope you have a great week. Thanks.
God's good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Swing wide, swing wide, all you heavens. Let the praise go up as the walls come down. All creation, every day with breath, repeat the sound. All his children, clean and pure hearts, good grace, good God. His name is Jesus. Jesus, our redemption, our salvation is in his blood. Jesus, light of heaven, free forever, his kingdom Good morning, We The Church. We're so excited you're with us. Um, I, am, I am pumped to be able to uh, be able to bring you the message today. If you're a first time guest, thanks for joining us. Uh, we do hope that as a little while ago they uh, said, uh, we hope you subscribe to our YouTube channel and, uh, and like our Facebook page. Uh, but we are excited you're with us this morning. I'm gonna do a little housekeeping real quick uh, before we get into our message. Um, over the course of the past couple of weeks, you've heard Adam say uh, that we were going to be doing a gathering on July the 12th. But as the coronavirus uh, cases have actually went back up, we were not planning on this one bit. We were thinking that we were going to be past this point so we could actually have a celebration together. So we're here again, I'm sorry, but we're again gonna have to postpone that until we can actually have a true celebration with each other. So if you've already uh, got in touch with us, then um, we, we thank you for getting in touch with us and we're going to be able to use those uh, to be able to email you back as soon as we get a new date. And we're hoping that's gonna be soon. So let's pray together uh, that this coronavirus gets out of here uh, so we can gather again. Uh, today, we're going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter 22. We're going to be finishing up the book of, uh, book of Matthew in chapter 22. And uh, we're going to be doing verses 41 through 46 today. And uh, in these verses, it's, um, it's some of the most important verses, I, I, as a Christian, I feel, uh, because it was a question that was asked that would challenge each and every single one of us. Um, so today's going to be actually a pretty short message. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, because it's probably one of the easiest messages you could possibly pay, uh, teach. And, uh, and there's really not a lot of unpacking that's got to be done uh, today. Uh, so I hope that you join with us and we jump right in Scripture. So let's go to Matthew chapter 22. We're going to start um, with verse, uh, we're going to start with verse number 41, it says, And now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question. I'm going to stop right there for just a second. So you've noticed over the past few weeks and a couple of months that, that the Pharisees had continued to try to trap Jesus in all these different questions they were asking. They were doing everything they could to trap him. And uh, so the, the table has turned, and now Jesus is asking them a question. It says, uh, Jesus asked them a question saying, what do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And the other thing says, who do you think the Christ is? And, and, and whose son is he? And, the, and they said to him, the son of David. And he said to them, how is it then that David in the spirit calls the Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. And then David calls him Lord. How is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. So we see right there that, the, like I said, the table had been turned, that the script had been flipped. And, uh, and Jesus, it was his turn to start asking the questions. And he just asked a simple one. Um, and the Pharisees thought they had him. They said, well, he's the son of David. And then Jesus refers back to what we read in Psalms uh, chapter 110, verse 1, where he says that the Lord says to my Lord that he would uh, put him at the right hand and he would make his enemies footstool. And what we see there is, is that Jesus is basically saying, 
There's no way I could be David's son. Because I've been here forever. I was here when the world was spoken to existence. I was there when, when speaking through the burning bush. I was there with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when we were in the fiery furnace together. I've been here. There's no way that, that I could be anyone's son except for the Father because I've always been there. I've always been a constant. And thank God, Jesus has always been our constant. See, so many times we don't have a constant in our life. And maybe, maybe um, you've got a lot of different things going on in your life right now. But there's one thing that's consistent, and that's Jesus Christ. I love the question he asked because I think as a, as a Christian, we need to be asking ourselves that question all the time. Who do we say Christ is? Who is Christ? What, is being, what, does, what does Jesus Christ mean to us as believers? And if you've asked yourself, if you ask yourself that question and you really don't have a response, I'm going to kind of challenge you to really think about what your salvation is and what it means to you. Because I'm not real sure if you can't give a response to that question if your relationship with Jesus is where it needs to be. Because when we have that life change, when our lives are changed by Jesus, then we understand who He is. I just want to share with you today I want to have the opportunity to be able to tell you who I believe Christ is. See, I believe that Christ is love. When I think about the Jesus that I serve, my Savior, the very first thing that comes to mind is love. He loves me no matter how dirty I am. He loves me no matter what I've done. He loves me no matter what's going on right now. And He loves me no matter what I'm going to do in my life. And because of that, I understand His love. When I think of Jesus, I think of grace. And that grace that He has for me, I don't deserve it. There's nothing I can do to earn it. And I know that. He loves me anyway. I don't know why He does. To be honest with you, a lot of times I feel like I'm an unlovable person. But the grace He has for me far outweighs anything that I could ever, ever imagine. You know, when I think of Jesus, I think of Like I said a while ago, being constant. When my life's been in turmoil, that's the only thing I could look toward is Jesus. That was the only person that I could go to that would understand. That's the only person sometimes I felt like I even, could even talk to. And I got peace in knowing that. And even speaking of peace, Jesus is peace to me. You know, when my life is a storm and the waves are crashing, and I feel like I'm drowning, it's when he comes out of the belly of the boat and calms the seas. You know, when I rely on him and I, my focus stays, stays on him, I'm like Peter when he was walking on water because I know that he can do everything. When I think of Jesus, it reminds me how weak of a person that I am without Him. But I can do all things through Him because He strengthens me. See, I didn't even know what love really was until I met this guy. I didn't know what it was, but I will tell you this. I love because He first loved me. I don't know what I'd be without him. I get to celebrate his birth around Christmas, which we don't even know if that's really when his birthday was. We have no clue, but we celebrate it then. But one thing that blows my mind is that we celebrate the birth, but then 
this Jesus that is my Savior and who is my Christ. Goes in the dark for a few years and we don't know what happens in the Bible and what they say about him through his teenage years. But this guy shows up when he's 30 years old. I remember when I was 30, a lot of things was going on in my life and then I thought to myself, Jesus showed up when he was 30. And Jesus didn't go and he didn't get all these guys that were dressed in great garb and, and, and do all these things. He went and got guys like me. Probably just old ugly bearded guys. Guys that were rough around the edge. Guys that had a past. Guys he knew would have a future. See, the Christ I serve, who he's to me, he sees past my imperfections. Sometimes when I'm, when I'm asking myself that question, I think about what other people think about Jesus and who he is. It takes me to when he healed the blind man and when he made uh, the leper spots go away. I sometimes wonder who Christ is to Lazarus when he woke up and who he was to Mary Magdalene when the spirit was casted out. See, there's one thing is that, that we can all have a different view of who Christ is to us. But one thing must stay the same and one thing cannot be different. And that is, is that He is the Son of God. He is God Himself. He's God in the flesh. That He came to this world, this imperfect world that I'm standing around right now and birds are going nuts. He came to this world to save you and save me. Who's Christ? He's the life jacket in the storm. Who's Christ? He's the friend when you're alone. Who's Christ? He's the constant. Who's Christ? He's my Savior. See, Jesus is not this little superhero that we read about in a nonfiction book. He is the Savior of the world. He's the spotless Lamb. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. He was at the beginning. He will be at the end. He will be the one that con He's the one that did conquer death, and it's going to help us conquer death. See, I will never die. I will remain alive because of Him and Him alone. Such a simple question. Who's, who is the Christ? I could sit here and talk about it all day long. Because I owe him everything. And I deserve nothing. But he loves me anyway. So I hope that you're asking yourself the question right now, who is Christ to me? I'm not even gonna pray for us today. I'm gonna take a little a script out of Adam's book. I'm not even gonna pray for us today, but what I'm gonna hope and pray, and I've been praying is, is that right now while you're watching this, that you're in a group with some family. You're in a group with some friends. You're in a small group and you're, you're having church together. What I'm going to ask you is this. In just a moment, when I go away, I want you to start the discussion. And you begin the discussion of who is Christ to you? And you, you go through that question and you pray with each other and you celebrate who Jesus is and not, not only was, is, and is to come. See, there's one thing that we get to do 
is that we get to celebrate a Savior that's conquered everything. And that's a celebration. So I'm going to ask you right now to prepare yourselves and prepare your hearts to be able to talk about who Jesus is. If you're by yourself, I want you to even talk out loud. The person in the next room beside you might think you're crazy. You know what? It's even better than that. Get up and go to that room and tell them who you think Jesus is and, and what he means to you. Church, we've got work to do. This virus might keep us apart in a corporate setting, but it doesn't keep us apart in small groups. So if this week you're not with a group, call up some friends and bring them over next week as we continue to study through the book of Matthew. But now, do yourselves a favor. Worship and celebrate Him and talk about who He is. Because Christ is everything. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Hope you have an awesome week. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. See you guys.